I want to know, uh, thinking about your other characters in the movie, uh, Larry Bloom has more difficult than the others, and in maybe, what's the difference? Well, uh, Larry is definitely more complicated than, than uh, any of the other characters I've played, f for sure. And, and you do so beautifully, if I may say uh, so myself, <laughs> my friend Jason Biggs. Thank you, my friend <laughs> Natasha. That's very sweet of you true. to say. It's, uh, you know, he's, um, you know, he's, he's deep. I mean, there's a lot going on. He's in a very interesting and unique position. And he uh, makes some decisions that are, uh, you know, questionable, I'd say, and selfish and opportunistic. And emotionally speaking, he is, uh, you know, tested and he's, uh, and he's, you know, re requires more of me as an actor than I've ever had to give before. So, and just in general, it's a bit out of my wheelhouse, um, or at least out of my comfort zone. It's, it's, it's muscles that I haven't exercised in a long time, if ever, and it's, uh, it was a challenge. It was a challenge for me, so, and, and a welcome one at that. Also, for Larry, because it is such a, a it is a smaller role, um, and because of the ensemble nature of the show, I feel like it happens with a lot of the characters, but consequently, a lot has to be accomplished in a short amount of time. So, in, in a, a small, in a few amount of scenes, and even in a few amount, uh, even a small amount of uh, lines, there has there is oftentimes, you know, a lot happening, um, and you know it's funny, it's sad, it's it's all of the above, and so it's 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 certainly different than uh, than my sort of typical broad comedy characters for and, sure. You know, yeah. What's so interesting about this show and uh, Jen Houston are casting director did such an incredible job, who was recently nominated for an Emmy, um, is uh, it, it's like this magical uh, thing that Genji and Jen together pulled off of really culling from, you know, it's like they were able to see into like our souls or something where we could not see ourselves. Um, meaning as somebody who knows Jason uh, for whatever, 15 years, it's like, uh, uh, Larry is definitely the closest, like, there's so much of, you know, Me. you yeah. in that character. Like, you know, it's much more... Taking um, advantage of what we actually offer as people. Yeah, like, there's something about, like, you know, even in terms of, uh, I mean, just for everybody, like, I think uh, uh, Red is a good example. Like, Kate Mulgrew is, in no way is she Red. I mean, she's not <laughs> Russian, she's not, you know, n n there's nothing, her life is completely the polar opposite. Um, and yet, she is so, somewhere in her soul is like exactly that woman lives. It's very specific and, and strange thing of like, I mean, maybe Uzo is the most, maybe Uzo and Taryn are probably like the two most far-fetched in terms of uh, they're, they're nothing themselves. like their character. And yet, for, um, specific to Uzo, like, you know, the the underlying vulnerability that makes uh, Crazy Eyes such a, you know, lovable and fascinating character and so human despite her, you know... Craziness. Deep eccentricity. Yeah, but I mean, like, real... I mean, she's so... Such a broad character and yet feels so human and so um, specific. And that's really, you know, the mark of, like... That's, like, Uzo's, you know, whatever... Her Uzo soul coming out and being, like just that human. So it's very interesting the way they kind of like figured all that out in a way that I don't think we could have seen in ourselves, you know? It's really true. It's, I mean, it's, I like, we, that's something that, um, you know, we'll talk about as a cast as we get to know each other. It's kind of real, you know, every now and then you'll be kind of like uh, taken by surprise when you see the reflection of um, the person's character that they play. Because it's almost like, you know, seeing, uh, and sometimes we don't have scenes together, so it's like, you, you, we're kind of like seeing each other at like a press events or something, or, or we see each other at work in the morning, but we don't get to do scenes together. Um, and then you'll sort of like get this glimpse of them and why they play their role so well, and it's sort of like an interesting um, like moment of uh, clarity where you're like, oh my God, how could they see that? Yeah. You know, I think we just all try as people to put up so many walls, you know, uh, uh, about who we really are and like we think we're fooling the people around us and that they can't actually see us 
and this was a real case of like, you know, X-ray vision or something. I bet you she. I bet you Jen wins. Jen Houston. Yeah. Boy, does she deserve it! I gotta yeah. tell you. I mean, and she does it on other shows too. I mean, she's a phenomenon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this show is not a typical women's show. It's not about shoes, it's not about men, you know, women suffering about men. Why do you think this show is so appealing? And for Jason, at this point, being the main male character in the show, at this point, do you know what women want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> um, well, as you know, as a woman, really, shoes and men are the only two things we think about. Yes, no, but I'm um, talking about the industry. No, but I mean, I think that that's yes. what's so... Uh, you know, uh, fascinating about how long it's taken for us to get to this place that we have shows like, you know, Girls and Inside Sh Amy Schumer and, and Broad City and our show, which are like these real, like, thank God they all came on the scene because as a woman, I'm sure, you know, for all of us, it's like really minimizing to, you know, be like seeing yourself reflected as like, oh, so it's really life is about being very skinny having a spray tan and, you know, wearing high heels. It's like, and I hope he calls me. It's like the, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I, uh, I, I'm a person and I know a lot of people and, uh, you know, it's just got nothing to do with what uh, life is actually about. So it's, it's really very fun and hopefully indicative of changing times uh, that we're getting to see, like how people, you know, actually function and, uh, you know, that there's actually not such a great divide between male and female, that in fact those things are constantly crossing over. And, you know, men are women and women are men. Jason? <laughs> what do women want? I, um... <laughs> I, I don't pretend to know what, what women want. I barely know what I want. But how do we discover it? How do I... Yes, how will I show. discover it? What do you mean? How, uh, because it's an intimate show that women share other things that the stereotypical shows. Yeah, so who well, have you discovered so far? Well, uh, you know, it's um, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Natasha? What do women? Want? Gosh! Stay <laughs> on topic. Don't be distracted by this drawing of myself with giant, giant breasts. Uh, okay. Everything Am I Jason learned about women, he learned from uh, Natasha <laughs> at an early age. At an early age. Jason, I think. Listen, I I have the great privilege in, in this show in particular of working around and with the mainstream, being an actress. Oh, I certainly dreamed about well, it. Well, but you never thought that. What are your next steps after, uh, because you sing, you already being, you know, heard to, to another role? I, I only sing for fun. I, I sing like, you know, between takes. A little, <laughs> I sing between takes, not today. Um, I sing between on, takes, I sing like in the shower, I sing like. Do the opera, like, you've been doing um, it all day. I've been singing all day. I was singing a little bit of, um, um, depuis le jour. No. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, God. I'm your hype man. Depuis le jour. Je me suis anyway. I but I sing for fun. I only sing for fun. Um, and I, what's next for me? At, well, season three. We're shooting season three now. Um, I have. I'm going. I just shot a guest spot on a new Bravo show called Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, and I'm supposed to go back and do another episode of that. I also am producing a documentary called Free CC about CC McDonald, an African American trans woman who spent 19 months of a 41-month prison sentence in a men's prison uh, for defending herself. We're doing a, that documentary, Free CC, should be out at the end of 2015 or 2016. Mm -hmm. I have another documentary that I'm producing called Trans Teen for MTV that's going to be out this fall, and I'm writing a, God, Jesus, and that's why I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, and I'm writing a book, I'm writing a memoir that'll be out in the fall of um, 2015. Yo no canto, yo soy rapera. No. 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 No.
ropa de calenda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pero es it's something very serious to me. I feel that, you know, we should wait to have kids. We should not be pregnant at any stage in our life. Prison should not be the place for you to be pregnant. I just for to get pregnant. I mean, if you go in there pregnant, yeah. okay, but to get pregnant, I don't think that's where your focus should be on. Um, you know, it's hard. You can't raise your child in prison. Your child will be removed from you in prison. So it's not the way to go. And I just want to make that clear that it's entertainment. Yes, this show is entertainment, but this is not a show to promote people to go to jail and to have a romance with an officer in jail. This is for entertainment. So. And the rea it, it's, but it's also reflective of the truths and the realities. I mean, you met the real life. Yeah, um, I, I am. I am. So th these are truths. But again, we learn from the mistakes that others commit, and we, we want to improve as society, and we want to take away the arrogance, and we want to take away the judging of everyone else and understand one another. By doing that, and by saying that, what I mean is, it can happen in jail. I know that it is the truth. But I'm not promoting for somebody to go into jail and get pregnant or have a relationship with a card. I'm promoting um, the idea that there's things that occur, there are truths to everyone's story, everybody's struggle, and we need to understand as a society how do we help um, that individual um, um, to be more accepted and understood in society, not to be chastised or, or persecute, uh, prosecuted because of their choices or their mistakes. Well, all that you're talking about are the keys for the success of the TV series, the TV show. With the key, why is the series so successful? All, all the themes. Uh, I mean, oh, uh, okay. um, the topics, the, 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 the topics, things yeah. that were the issues and the things we're bringing up are pretty much making what is making the show more successful. Um, not only that, I think that also the fact that it's on Netflix. I think also the fact that the viewers are have access to it around the world, and it's not only in the United States. Um, also, Genji and the writers, how they write. Um, Jen Yusin, how she casted each individual. You know, the actors. It's, it's, it's a lot of things. And yeah. I think that, that at the end of the day, there's brilliant um, storytelling and, and compelling storytelling that makes people want to click on and see, watch the next episode. And um, I think it was de um, Susan Batson, in her book, Truth, my, my, Susan Batson is my acting mentor. She, I believe she quotes Deborah Messing in saying that people do not go to the theater or go to m movies or watch television shows to see you. They go to see themselves. And I think that, that audiences are seeing themselves in our show. Connecting. There's a connection. Um, well, of all the stories we have learned in these first two seasons, besides your own, which do you think is the saddest background oh, of saddest. all the Ooh. And what your and what was your reaction I for your Emmy nomination? I don't see I think they all yeah. have oh. they all have <laughs> Oh my god, that's hard to answer because I think that is what attracts all of us. The fact that they all have a flashback, they all have a layer. They all and they're all, they're all really, really sad and complicated. I'm just watching, we're watching Casey's backstory this in the second in the second season. I mean, it's devastating. Or Yael's. Yael's is devastating. Her delusional Selene's. states. So, um, oh. Lori, oh my God, go, oh, Woo. It's, it's it's. They have so this is it's the beauty all of it. very tragic. Comedic, but it has the the dark side of life. Mm -hmm. All the dark elements that we all go through, and we're able to like have moments of laughter. And have moments of, of sadness. I think the, I think the thing what the, what the backstories do do is that they show me, and then they show all of us is that any of us could end up in this situation. Yeah. That very easily, any of us could end up incarcerated. Um, and so this like so so maybe hopefully we won't judge people as harshly who are. Yeah, because it all comes up to bad choices and bad luck because they all come. And some, so, come sometimes it's bad choices, but oftentimes it is systemic. Often, let, let, let's, let's, I think, I, I, for me, I, I think it's important to note that it is systemic. For certain bodies and certain people um, are systemically oppressed, and there are no other options. And they don't know anything else. I think some of us are raised in an environment where we don't have any other choice or know any better than what we have been exposed to. And Genji said in one of her quotes best, we've all done things that, that could take us to jail. We just haven't been caught. Mm -hmm. So either we're great criminals, or or we have horrible officers. <laughs> uh, what, is the, what is your role in, in the jail society? What would you say? 
like Red had a specific role in the society of this prison. What, what is your role in the, in the prison? How do you describe it? You know, our, like our role in, I mean, it's for Sophia. It's very clear. She does everyone's hair. So, <laughs> yes, you know, but at in some terms point, of, of relationship among the other relationships women. among the other women. Yes, in that kind of role. Sophia keeps herself. You know, she does. Yeah. She has. She's very. She's very close. You know, when we saw in season one with um, Sister Ingalls, and she has her relationships. But I think she, in a lot of ways, she very much keeps to herself. She doesn't have yeah. the strong alliances more with Sister Ingalls, I think, than with a lot of the, at least the way it's written so far, than with any of the other prisoners. So I think she kind of bounces around, and she she has relationships where she needs to have them, and she stays out of the drama. I think she and I have been very much in common that I, I stay out of, out of everybody else's drama. I'm very good at staying out of everybody else's drama. When you, uh, when you walked into the show, um, what did you want to say about...